And now, something a little less serious than Beethoven. Here is a nice, lighthearted uh, arrangement, solo guitar arrangement I came up with, of a popular, traditional folk song, The Irish Washerwoman. I'm sure you've heard it. It's that fiddle tune, da 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 right? Just in time for St. Patrick's Day. And I came up with this arrangement because it's kind of a challenging uh, melody to play on the guitar. You know, there's a lot of reiterated notes, which rules out um, certain legato techniques, such as hammer-ons and pull-offs, sweeps or taps, because um, you're picking the same note. So also picking is the primary go-to technique here. And there's a lot of string crossing. You have um, arpeggios, like bugle calls, um, you know, that would require either a five-foot stretch or string crossing. So the fingering and picking sequence I came up with, I feel, is, gives you the best shot at playing it. So the way I'm going to do it is I'll start out at a fairly relaxed tempo, play it a few times. Each time I'll kind of ramp up the tempo until I crash and burn, okay? So here it is. Okay, so I'm starting on an upstroke because I want to make that first string cross on an upstroke so I take advantage of outside the strings picking. So I'm going... That's the first section, and you'll notice that looking at the tab, the pick strokes are all advantageous. You know, you're playing this G major arpeggio. That's tricky to do because you have that perfect fourth interval, which requires you to... But you're picking the strings in the easiest way possible. It's not easy, it's easier. <laughs> Same thing with the A minor arpeggio. Now this one, the melody actually kind of jumps up to B. Now this is interesting. I decided to throw the A note down here on E string's fifth fret. Previously we played it here. That just worked out better, you know? If I tried playing on I mean, it's doable, but when you go to play it fast, trust me, it just kind of screws things up. It introduces what's called inside the strings picking, which is, um, this is the outside the strings picking, by the way. This is inside the strings picking. There is one instance of that later in the second part, which I'll show you. So just practice toggling back and forth between those G major and A minor arpeggios. You can just do this.
And uh, you know, you want to finger each note and then get off it quickly because that, it's almost like sweet picking where you want to go. You want to get off the notes right after you finger them. That kind of helps keep things tidy. Now for the second theme, section B in the column, that would be bar 10, I'm reaching up to the 15th fret here. Okay, and down to the 10th fret. That's a five fret stretch between the index finger and pinky, but it's not too bad in this area of the neck because the frets are closer together. So here I'm starting on a downstroke on the downbeat. So that little pickup note is an upstroke. So it's... And then a position shift. So you make that shift nice and smooth. A little bit of a slide there. And then that's the one instance of inside the strings picking there. And we go. Yeah, right there, because we're going a downstroke on a high string and then upstroke. But then you get a quick break because I did throw in a double pull off. That's kind of like a nice Celtic flavored ornament. So again, slowly. Another little slide there from the eighth fret to the seventh fret. Again. That's my ending. So last time through. Yeah, make sure you don't oversuit that. It's a strummed octave on G. So experiment with different tones. You know, I'm using an overdriven tone here. I'm trying to get like a creamy violin type of tone. And experiment with varying degrees of palm muting or not palm muting as well. And, um, you know, it could work on an acoustic guitar, but, um, it's kind of fun to play it like this, again, with palm muting. Or not palm muting, but just maybe muting the bottom strings. You don't want them ringing in the background. So have fun with it.